Hey, who do we have with us? This is Mark Caron. How are you doing tonight, Mark? Good, how are you? Good, good. We thank you for ha taking some time out to have you on the show. Uh, no problem. Thanks for having me. So, uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. Um, you, you got drafted by the Mets in 1991. What was that feeling like to, to see your name up there? Uh, at first, I mean, it was one of those things that was kind of too good to be true. I mean, being that I'm from, uh, you know, I'm from the Bronx. I'm, you know, from New York City. So I grew up a huge Mets fan, a huge Dwight Gooden. He was my idol. So uh, uh, when I found out I got drafted by the Mets, it was it was almost like a dream come true for me. I I gotta say one thing. Our boy Frank here is from the Bronx, and when you said Met fan. Kind of just, he just put on this look like, really? You're from the Bronx, brother? <laughs> but, all right, Mike. Well, I, no, I, mean, go ahead. I got to say, you got, I mean, I wasn't necessarily not a Yankees fan back in the day. Um, it was more more of the fact that I was a, a, Dwight, a huge Dwight Gooden fan, and he happened to play for the Mets. So, I mean, if he would end up playing for the Yankees, I probably would end up being a Yankees fan, but. Hey, back in the mid '80s, when I was a kid growing up, the Yankees were terrible. That is, that's a fact. Daryl Strawberry, you know, you had Strawberry, good, and you had a good team out there. All right, uh, my question for you is, what are you doing next year? To be, I, I know you're a free agent, right? Yeah, I'm a free agent. I'm a free agent, and uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. To be <clears throat> quite honest with you, um, I, I mean, I, I'm I'm just enjoying my time at home right now, but it was it's definitely gonna have to be, it's definitely gonna have to be uh, a perfect uh, opportunity, perfect job for me to to kind of leave again. I guess you could say. I mean, after 21 years, it's kind of hard. Um, you know, I still I still enjoy playing. I still love pitching. Uh, I still love to to compete. But to be honest with you, I haven't even spoke to my agent not at one point in time yet. <laughs> so you're on the fence. I mean, like I said, I, I, I guess, yeah, you could say I'm on the fence. It's going to have to be, like I said, a perfect scenario for me. Um, but I guess if I'm leaning towards one way, I'm leaning towards, you know, just kind of hanging them up, I guess you could say. Oh, okay. Would you, uh, and hi, Mark, this is Frank here, the Bronx boy. Uh, listen, would you consider going back to Japan? You know, if I don't know how much they pay. Maybe you can enlighten us on that. Would you? Would you consider going back to Japan? You've had uh, title success there and, you know, closer success there. I mean, uh, would I? no, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, consider going back for a couple reasons. Um, you know, I had a great run in Japan. It was probably, it was probably the, the fun, it, was, it was a great six years that I had in my career. It was a learning experience. My, my family got a chance to go out there. Um, I have no ill regret, regrets for going to uh, Japan. Um, uh, it, it was definitely an eye opener for me over there, uh, having success over there. Um, you know, made a little bit of money, uh, -uh. and uh, you know, those types of things. Sorry about that, guys. Um, no, that's but right. the thing about it is that I wanted to go back with for my final year, which would have been last year. And at that point, it was I needed 23 saves to. Um, to get to 200, and over there there's only been four guys that were, that were able to have 200 plus more saves over there. Uh, over here in the states, you know, 300 saves is the big number as for a closer. But being that they play less amount of games over there, it's 200, the huge number. And uh, I offered to go back and play for a couple hundred thousand dollars, and I didn't get one offer. Um, but their coach over there is one of they don't really want a foreigner to enter their record books, I guess you could say. But I can respect that. Um, you know, that's that's just the nature of their, of their culture over there. So um, my chapter over there is, is probably closed for sure. I don't respect that. Fuck Japan. That's how I Well, <laughs> you know, hey, they had, I'll tell you a funny story, man. They had this dude named Alex Cabrera, and Alex Cabrera used to play for the Diamondbacks. Um, big dude. I mean, this guy has bombs, man. And uh, he needed, like, one more home run uh, to, like, I think tie 55 in one season. He had like 10 at-bats left, and they walked him every time. He went up there one time. He's a right-hander. He went up there one time, left-handed, bat upside down with the, uh, with the you know with his hands on the barrel, with his helmet on backwards, and they still walked him. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, well, man. you are in the record books. You got the fastest pitch ever thrown in, in Japanese history. Twice. So, fuck Japan. Uh, quickly, I want to ask you, you, you played with Darvish, right? 
I played against Darvish. Yeah. You played against Darvish. Did the Rangers overpay last night? I'll tell you what, man. It's just like uh, it's just like uh, when Matsuzaka came over here with uh, Boston. They paid about fifty some odd million for him. But I tell you what, there was no better pitch in Japan than he was. And as far as as far as I'm concerned right now, there really is not a better pitcher in Japan. I mean, the guy puts up ridiculous numbers, man. I mean, he was 16 and something with a two something ERA. Um, I mean, the guy could pitch flat out. He could pitch. Um, I just want to see how he's gonna how his own people are gonna take to him because about two years ago when I was there, he did a huge interview and he told his people that I will not leave. I'm not gonna go play in the major league. Yeah, I'm I... not gonna leave you people and. And I told my trans at the time, he just stuck his foot in his mouth. And I'm like, he should never have said that. I remember reading that. Mark, yeah. we got we got about 45 seconds. Now give us your take on you in the sense of, will he have success as some of the other starting pitchers that have come over from Japan have struggled? They have struggled. They, you know, Matsuzaka struggled with his with, with some injuries. Um, his first year, I believe, he went 11-11 in the big leagues, um, which isn't too bad. But you know what, to be honest with you guys, I mean, I, I, I have to say he's going to do well. Um, his stuff is electric. Um, it is, it's, it's legit. That's all I can say. It's legit. And if you watch some of the games he pitched against us in the WBC, he pretty much dominated against us. And um, like I said, if there is one pitcher I think that, that's ready to come over right now, it's, uh, it's him. And uh, I think he'll do, he'll do well as long as, I mean, as well as Aoki, the guy I think the Brewers might have picked him up. Aoki's a, a center field outfielder who is an amazing baseball player himself. All right, Mark, thank you very much for coming on with us. I personally would love to see you in the Bronx, some pinstripes. Be nice. But, uh, again, thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate your time, and have a good night, dude. Thanks, man, fellas. I really appreciate it, and uh, thanks for support, and I have to call in again, man. Yeah, whenever you want. Take we'll, care, Mark. We'll take thank the you. call, bro. All right. Hey, I'll, I'll keep you guys in mind, and uh, if anything comes up, let me know, man. All right. All right. Take care. Bye, fellas. See you, buddy. Flagrant Foul Radio, we'll be back with you with some NFL talk. Happy Hanukkah, bitches.